Hi guys, Dean here, and today I'm going to be making a start of my review of Micro by Michael Crichton and Richard Preston. Um, I am currently reading this as we speak, so I'm going to kind of give you some updates along the way. But I do have some tabs, and I'm going to read you the blurb. I'll go through, check out my tabs, and share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. From the creator of Jurassic Park comes a terrifying thriller which pits untamed nature against cutting edge science. Three men are found dead in a locked Honolulu office. There is no sign of a struggle, but their bodies are covered in ultra-fine, razor-sharp cuts. Seven of America's top graduate students are invited to Hawaii by a pioneering microbiology company, which promises them access to the very latest scientific discoveries, but they are walking into a death trap. The group is thrown into Hawaii's teeming rainforest. To survive, they must harness the destructive force of nature itself and escape the company's trained killers who hunt them through the hostile wilderness. Dun dun dun. Oh yeah, so um, in the author bio it says that Crichton was well into writing Micro at the time of his death and Richard Preston was selected to complete it. And so there's a character called Karen. Um, she says, can you walk on the other side of me, okay? Why? So my hand is free. Peter looked at her right hand. She held her car keys in her fist, the key shaft protruding from between her knuckles like a knife blade. Hanging from the keychain was a canister of pepper spray close to her wrist. Peter couldn't help smiling. You think we're at risk here? The world is a dangerous place. Mass Ave at five in the afternoon. They were in the heart of Cambridge. Colleges don't report the actual number of rapes in their communities, Karen said. It's bad publicity. Wealthy alumni won't send their daughters. I mean, she does make a good point. And then we get this, which annoyed me. Okay, so. The cobra struck, burying its fangs deep in the rat's body. The rat shivered, stayed on its feet, then collapsed. That's why I'm a vegetarian, Rick said. You don't think plants have feelings, Peter said. Don't start, Rick said. You and Jenny. Jen's research involved communication among plants and insects via pheromones, chemicals released by organisms to trigger responses. The field had made enormous advances over the last 20 years. Jenny insisted that plants had to be seen as active, intelligent creatures, little different from animals. And Jenny enjoyed annoying Rick. It's ridiculous, Rick said to Peter. Peas and beans don't have feelings. Of course not, Peter answered with a smile. It's because you've already killed the plant, heartlessly dispatched it for your own selfish meal. You just pretend the plant didn't scream in agony when you killed it, because you don't want to face the consequences of your cold-blooded plant murder. Absurd. Speciesism, Peter said, and you know it. He was smiling, but there was truth to what he was saying. The thing is, is that's like a classic straw man argument that people use against veganism. They're like, yeah, well, plants have feelings too. Even if you take this to be true, right? Plants are fed to animals to raise animals for consumption. So the kind of plant equivalent or whatever of having a veggie burger, say you kill five plants. If you have a beef burger, you're killing like a hundred plants to feed the cow to raise the beef, plus then the cow. So even if you take that argument to be true, it's the, the morally correct thing to do is still to eat the plants and not the animal. So. It makes no sense. It makes no sense, people. So, uh, Jenny says, I think we're in shock. Look at our faces, circumoral pallor. Blanched skin around the lips was a classic sign of fear, which I just thought was a cool little detail. And I thought this was cool as well. Again, a, a lot of the stuff I really liked about this was the stuff that gets unlocked due to the fact that they're so small. Jenny noted the smell of the micro world. It had a smell all its own. A complicated earthy scent filled her nose and it wasn't bad, actually quite nice in a way. It was an odor of soil mixed with a thousand unknown scents, some sweet, some musky, drifting in the liquid air. Many of the smells were pleasant, even lovely, like exquisite perfumes. We're smelling pheromones, the signaling chemicals that animals and plants use for communication, Jenny said to the others. It's the invisible language of nature. It lifted her spirits. Here she could experience the full spectrum of sense in the natural world for the first time. This revelation both thrilled her and made her feel afraid. And they drink some water and it says, uh, they drank from dewdrops, cupping the water in their hands. The surface of the water was sticky and they had to swat the water to break the surface tension. As Peter lifted a bit of water to his mouth, it heaped up into a blob in his hands. Again, all this stuff's really cool. I don't know how accurate the science and whatnot is, but like visually, from a visual reader's point of view, it's pretty cool, you know? And uh, Hawaii doesn't have any native ants. All ants in Hawaii are invading species, which is kind of cool. And they meet the ants later on, and you can imagine how that goes when they're less than an inch tall. So one of the characters here working for the bad guys, he said, when I was in Afghanistan, I noticed something about accidents. What's that, Drake asked. Accidents happen more often to assholes. Hmm. 
And um, yeah, by this point, like half of the students are dead. Um, and they re reflect on that and they say like a 50% death rate over two days. That's worse than it was at the beaches at Normandy, which is terrifying. Just thought it was interesting. So one of the date lines on this is the 31st of October, 11.15 p.m. It is currently the 31st of October, 1 p.m. at the time I'm reading. So that was a nice little bit of synchronicity. Okay, so then the CEO of the company gets like swarmed by the killer microbots and he knows what's going to happen so he tries to shoot himself. He turns the gun to his head and pulls the trigger. Nothing happened. He had emptied the clip shooting at the bots. Grim. And also they've, by this point they've like rematerialized or whatever the main characters and so they've also got a huge, like a full size version of the microbot after him. It kind of tears him in two. And I just thought this was interesting as well. Karen says, uh, the technology exists, and you know as well as I do that with technology, once a thing is invented, it never gets uninvented. Uh, the bad things too, Rick agreed. Exactly. Killer bots and micro drones are here to stay. People will die in terrible new ways. Terrible wars will be fought with this technology. The world will never be the same. So we're kind of lucky that this technology doesn't exist, at least that we know of. Um, but also, I did think it kind of odd these characters don't seem too phased about all the death. Like, they've lost a bunch of their friends died on this trip. And they don't seem to have like PTSD, they don't even seem to notice, you know? They've just forgotten. But yeah, that's about all I've got for you. So, Micro by Michael Crichton and Richard Preston. Pretty cracking adventure novel with elements of science fiction, miniaturization. Reminded me of The Borrowers, uh, but grittier. And uh, yeah, really cool stuff. I don't know how accurate the science is, but it was certainly made for enjoyable reading. I gave it a 4 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of uh, Micro by Michael Crichton and Richard Preston. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.